What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 330 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. It's time for us to break down a bunch of things on the hot tag side of things, where we will talk about the rumors and the gossip and news and anything else that's happening in the world of professional wrestling. And the people that are we are myself, as always, your host, Tony Mango, and joining me is Robert DeFelice. How's it going? It's going all right, but uh, we do have an issue, and I will clarify this ahead of time for anybody that's already thought so. Yes, the audio settings are weird. Uh, It is a combination of a lot of factors. So if you hear a fan in the background, that is a laptop. If you hear two fans, that is two laptops. Two laptops. Uh, If you hear honking, it's the New York City streets. If you hear a bunch of tinny, like, audio on my end, it's because I'm practically in, like, a tin can. No, I am not recording from a bunker. There is no World War III (laughs) happening or anything. It's just an apartment. And uh, that's what happens in New York and stuff so bear with it uh i am also on a a laptop instead of my normal desktop so my audio settings are weird i'm on a different microphone too everything is weird so this uh audio is not going to be as good as it normally is nor is the next episode which is the wrestling with the past retrospective of the hall of fame for the class of 2018 Sorry, the best I can do uh, in the circumstances and stuff, but we will be back to normal next week for all the other kind of stuff like that. Hopefully it's not too bad, and if it is, hey, we have uh, two shows a week, you know, (laughs) don't complain, but we need to break down a couple of different hot tags here, and they all... For the most part, they happened over the past couple of days, and then one of them randomly happened today, and that's the one that I'm the most fired up of (laughs) out of all of it. We're going to save that one for last. Uh, But the one that I think is the biggest news is actually the thing that is the oldest story. So, you know, we're going to start off with the big one here. Hulk Hogan's potential return to WWE seems more guaranteed now than it ever has been. They have released some footage of the HBO documentary of Andre the Giant, and Hulk Hogan is of course, in it, because he had to be. I mean, it would be ridiculous if he wasn't. Uh, There is now talk that he is not only going to induct Hillbilly Jim into the Hall of Fame, which makes a lot of sense, but that he also could potentially be the replacement for Daniel Bryan as the SmackDown Live general manager. That doesn't make too much sense. It's it's something interesting, at the very least, and I kind of wanted to start there, actually. We do know now... Uh, Daniel Bryan is back to wrestling, which is awesome, and uh, that's something that I did not imagine would end up being the case. So we we need a replacement for him. You know, Shane McMahon did this whole story where he is saying that he's taking an indefinite leave of absence, and if you have Shane McMahon leaving the SmackDown role of commissioner, which I don't think he'll necessarily do that like for a long period of time, I was thinking that this would probably be some kind of a three-week stint or something like that, even if he sticks around, you're still having a leadership gap and you still don't have somebody to replace Daniel Bryan. So you need somebody to replace him. You need somebody to be, uh, somebody to be the general manager. And I had been thinking for a while that that person was going to be Kurt Angle because I thought Kurt Angle would beat Triple H and Stephanie. They would fire him the next night on Raw and then he would get hired the, the next night after that on SmackDown. Hulk Hogan popping up. That's interesting. Because even if they do the Kurt Angle thing, maybe Hulk Hogan becomes the replacement for Kurt. Uh, he does the whole Monday Night Raw thing, you know? Where oh. are you thinking about Hulk Hogan, though? Like, do you think that he's going to be a general manager? Um, I don't, It's weird because with all the different roles that Hogan has been in through the years, he's never been in a position of power in WWE at least. With TNA he did it, but it was kind of like I'm going to do this so I can be a heel real quick. And then when he was a babyface, he didn't stick around too long. Hogan as a GM? I, w- I want to say Raw because he's a bigger name and the bigger names tend to be on Raw, but Hogan was more of a Smackdown guy when he was in WWE, wasn't he? Probably. I mean, I think he was on SmackDown, the majority of that little section, if I remember correctly, but I was watching around that time. So I'm not yeah, sure. even the Hogan McMahon match was a SmackDown match. Hmm. I don't know. But Angle was uh, kind of a part of like, uh, wasn't he a part of the SmackDown Six? Yeah, he was. He was a huge part of SmackDown from 2002 to 2000. 
five or so. And I would think that if they were to do something like that, which of course this is just rumors and speculation, so that you know that take it with a grain of salt. If they were to do that, I think it would make more sense for Shane McMahon to be like, all right, well, you know what, Kurt Angle, you just got fired from uh, Raw by my sister and my brother-in-law, but how about you take this open spot on SmackDown and then and play the babyface kind of role, and then for Triple H and Stephanie to be like, we're going to bring back Hulk Hogan, fuck you, like that kind of thing. That would make more sense to me. But would Hogan even want to do a spot like that and be like on the Weekly. road every week. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't, I don't know. So. I was thinking about edge. I edge don't even know if edge would want to do that, but that'd be cool. That like I'd be totally in for about it. A general manager. Maybe if Brock goes away, we can have Heyman on one of these shows. Maybe. Would Heyman yeah. want to do it without Lesnar? I don't know who really wants to be a general manager and who can be an effective general manager while being on the road 24 7 anyway right and not somebody who's an active competitor and not somebody who is already doing some kind of managerial type of role like uh you know like i mean she's not on the road right now but like you couldn't give that spot to maurice after wrestlemania right when she's got her kid like you know what i mean like there's nikki bella did a thing where she wanted to be smackdown gm or something Maybe Nikki Bella. I just oh, I, I got I got a, I got something to bring up about her later in the hot tags that I think dispels the potential of that. But keep I, keep Nikki Bella in mind. I I don't very much care for when they take a woman who could be in the ring and they're like, "We have nothing for you here. Be a GM like AJ in 2012." Right. Um. At, th- at this point, I there's think... no women that I would put in that position either. If Summer Rae would have still been around, then she would have been potentially somebody, but she got fired a while ago. So none of the women that are in WWE right now, I think, should be anything but in the ring, except for Maria and Maurice. And, like, Renee and, you know, like the you know backstage personnel, like that kind of thing. I did briefly think, what about Corey? Maybe let's up... Let's upgrade Corey Graves into that next level of, hey, we can't use you in the ring. Maybe Corey Graves becomes the SmackDown Live Journal Manager. I wouldn't be too opposed to that. But I, at the same time, even though I don't think that he is the best, I like him as a color commentator enough to want to keep him around and not replace him with somebody else, you know? Uh, I'll, I'll throw in a caveat to that. I think he's very good with Saxton and Phillips. I think those oh, three... Yeah have a great rapport. Whereas on, on Raw, that's that's a mess. No. Raw is such a mess. Cole and Coachman and Corey, the triple C thing, that doesn't work out. I don't think Coachman is really Phillips working out too, too super well, but I think it, Cole and Corey don't even work out alone. Well, Coachman was very good in his authority figure role back in 06. I wouldn't be opposed to him doing something. Yeah, they could always do that, you know. But Hogan, Hogan is one of those things where this. I mean, there's the also the other aspects of the hillbilly gym and all that other kind of stuff. But if you bring him on as a general manager, that goes from we don't necessarily want to bring him back into the company to we're bringing him back every single week, and he's in control of something, even though he's not technically in control. They're making it seem like he is. And I sort of can't see that necessarily happening. Well, are people still really upset about what happened? Apparently some people are. And there was uh, one of the news stories that happened about this was Mark Henry is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So he's doing a lot of interviews recently. And uh, in some of the interviews, people have been asking him, what do you think about the Hulk Hogan situation? And he said that he's part of what is apparently, I did not even know that this existed, uh, a delegation of black wrestlers from different promotions he said that there's not a promotion out there that doesn't have somebody that represents them for the delegation which to me is like i'm pretty sure that there is some in defense <laughs> that don't do that. but you know what i mean like uh that there's somebody from impact i'm assuming somebody from air of honor so on and so forth new japan maybe even and uh that he knows a lot of people that aren't okay with that and he's one of them and that he thinks that there are a bunch of steps that are necessary for him to be able to 
work his way back in. He has to do a formal apology and that he should do some charity work and stuff. Oh, well, hold on a second. Are you telling me that there's a black guy wrestler double a- NAACP? Like, I, gu- I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. I never he- heard about this before, but Mark Henry, how, like... How does this not get more attention? Right. Maybe it's just like a behind the scenes kind of thing, like wrestler's court, you know? Weird. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Like, I, I, yeah, me too. I would be happy to hear that there would be one for the women's wrestlers too. Like, as well as any LGBTQ wrestlers. Yeah, I mean, like, the, there's a good use for anything that's like that. If you are somebody who you feel like you need to have some kind of extra union kind of a thing, then, I mean, there should be, the whole, there's a whole other discussion about wrestlers and unions. Yeah. That is. But um, that, apparently in uh, Mark Henry's mind, that that's, this cohort is not necessarily too fond of the idea. And I don't blame him for it, because I can, there, this is one of those things where, we've talked about this before, you could be so anti Hogan coming back or you can be pro Hogan coming back for so many different reasons. If you're the type of person who is too upset about Hogan's comments, you might not ever want him to come back. And if you're somebody, unfortunately there's people out there that are like, he didn't say enough and he should be. And it's like, Oh my God, you're racist. But (laughs) (laughs) uh, I'm of the mentality that I think Usually, in certain circumstances, people deserve a second chance. I don't think that murderers deserve a second chance. Uh, but I also don't go, every murderer should just get killed with the death penalty and whatever. Like, there's lots and lots of gray areas. And I think that being a total white guy, white is all hell, uh, I am not the best person to talk to about it. But in my mind, it seems like Hulk Hogan was in a bad place and that he is genuine in his, a lot of his comments of, like, feeling bad about the situation and that that doesn't necessarily represent him and stuff. And if he has so me- much support from people in that community that corroborate his ideas of being like, I've never had a problem with him and that this is, he's, you know, always been great and whatever like that, eventually you, you can't punish people for their entire lives for something, you know? And... I think that there should be part of a healing process and maybe it takes a while. You know, it's been a couple years at this point. So it's not like they WWE fired him. And then two weeks later, they brought him back. They gave him a long stint away from the company and they did release something pretty soon that uh, pretty recently that said that they would be talking to Hogan about ways that he can make things up and that he can, like correct his behavior, whatever the wording was. I can't remember what it was. Do you remember, Hofan? Oh, I, I do not. It was some, something along the lines of like uh, helping uh, repair uh, community oh, efforts going forward. Or, yeah, forward. one of those kind of things, you know, where essentially they're saying like you should go under sensitivity training and that kind of thing. Like, this is the kind of thing that I hate. Because Hogan, like, well, what he said was terrible, but the issue to me was how they got the footage of him saying what he said, and it was like a 10-year-old thing when he said it, and they caught it in, like, this really weird, dark moment of his life, and I mean, you put a camera on yourself in the darkest moment of your life, and I'm sure you're not going to want to be responsible for a lot of the things that you say there either. If you've apologized and you know that you've progressed your life forward is it right to hold him accountable maybe not maybe so but i think if we're gonna be like that then we have to say the whole fabulous mula thing why can't it be the mula memorial if you're gonna be lenient on hogan it's it's such a hard topic to discuss i kind of look at it as like According to the testimonies of people with Mula, that was a long running thing and like an active choice and something that she did multiple variations of and, you know, like that kind of a thing where it was like, no, that's just how she was kind of. And with Hogan, it seems like it was kind of like, 
there's no justification to saying, well, it's behind closed doors. Well, behind closed doors is still a thing. And I also think at the same time, you know, you want to flip the coin a little bit. Almost everybody, if they are by themselves or they're with their closest friends or something like that, they would say things that they wouldn't necessarily say out in public, you know, whether it's a, a, you know, a racial joke or it's a rape joke or it's a sexist joke or it's some kind of a, even something as simple as like, oh my God, I wish I could just like kill anybody that likes ketchup or, you know, like, I mean, like, and it's like, you're not going to be like, oh my God, you actually want to do it. Like, there's a certain level of like, you can, you can argue the Hogan thing all around the board as far as ethics go. But when it comes to, if he bring, if he comes back, I think plenty of wrestlers have done plenty of awful things and there's a certain healing that kind of happens. You can't bring him in as far as a general manager though, right off the bat without it seeming a little bit weird. Now, if he inducts well, Hillbilly Jim, I think that that makes perfect sense. And that's a good, like, foot in the door, kind of, you know? He does one introduction of Hillbilly Jim. He's a part of whatever they do, like, uh, the recording of, like, WWE 24 or something like that. And it's kind of like he's not even the focal point, you know? Well, I, I guess the reason they would be bringing him in to induct Hillbilly Jim is because there's not much else, or there's not anyone else to possibly handle that induction. And, yeah, it's a foot in the door. And I don't think Hogan will be a castaway from the WWE family forever. It's just bad news. Publicity came out. They had to do what they had to do. Because if we're really going to get into the shady things of wrestling in that era, you got to call... Andre out on the carpet because yep. plenty of stories about him being racist and, you know, taking a shit on Bad News Brown's chest. But, <laughs> like, uh, you know... Oh, there's so many stories of so many people. Vince! Yeah. Vince, Vince, I don't know if Vince has ever been labeled a racist outside of fans that want to criticize the fact that there's never been a full black world champion. Well, Mark Henry... Well, well, I was going to correct myself there. Yeah. Um, face of the company, I guess. But, you know, we're going to be here talking about everybody if we want to get into the shady side of wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's another reason why it's like sometimes you have to just go, look, is it the – is it a Chris Benoit or is it a – uh? Rowdy Roddy China. Rowdy Roddy Piper going in blackface. You know, yeah, like, right. he's in the Hall of Fame and he came back to the company but he's dead. Yeah, so that's I mean th- there's room for everybody, I think, to have every opinion validated. And if somebody were to be like, No, I do not want Hogan back under any circumstances in any capacity, I would be like, All right. Tell me why. Like, it's not going to be like, oh my god, that's ridiculous. What are you talking about? Like, I, there's room for it, you know what I mean? And it's tough, but as far as, like, the potential of him returning, now seems like it is the time that he's going to be coming back. They couldn't avoid having him in that HBO documentary. He he was a necessary part. And well, Did they do that HBO documentary, or was that an HBO specific thing? If I remember correctly, as far as, like, the production notes and stuff had gone it's an hbo documentary that wwe worked with okay like it's not a wwe produced thing kind of like the um the rick flair uh espn 30 for 30 yeah yeah where it's like he was in that wasn't he Hogan in that i think so i mean he kind of has to be right you know like yeah i mean he's he's hulk hogan like yeah yeah i mean mula is a name for sure but Moolah is more of a inside wrestling man. Hulk Hogan is wrestling in the pop culture zeitgeist. Period. Hulk Hogan is pop culture. Hulk Hogan, yeah, like Hulk Hogan is easily the biggest name in wrestling. Period. Yeah, and I I don't care how hard whoever wrestling fan you are, nobody will ever know Stone Cold Steve Austin as much as Hulk Hogan. Nobody will know John Cena as much as Hulk Hogan. 
The only person who rivals Hulk Hogan is The Rock. The Rock. And there's nobody. You go on the fucking street and you go, can you name me these wrestlers? And you show them a picture of Fabulous Moolah. Nobody knows who the fuck that is. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, is that like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or something? <laughs> you know, like one of those kind of things. So I am very curious to see what happens with here. This These next two weeks, I think, are going to be – actually, the next three weeks are going to be really tantamount to figuring out what the Hulk Hogan situation is. And if we don't hear anything by the week after WrestleMania, then I don't that, think that there's that. not going to be too much going on with it. But that's – that Monday Night Raw and that SmackDown after WrestleMania and the Hulk Hogan uh, – or not the Hulk Hogan, the Andre the Giant uh, thing that's on the 10th, I think, is when they're releasing that. I think it's on the the Wednesday after. Wednesday after Mania. So that would be the – No, the Mania no, is the 8th. So, so it's the 11th if it's the Wednesday. So, I mean, you, you get to like the 12th, the 14th, the 18th, something like that, and we haven't heard anything – then I don't think that this Hogan stuff turns out to be all that much, but I would not be shocked at all if we see his face pop up. And the Hillbilly Jim thing is going to be big, too, because at this point, we know who is inducting about half of the Hall of Fame, but we still don't know the other half. And if they announce later today, tomorrow or something, that Hillbilly Jim is being inducted by Hulk Hogan, start running with the idea of he's returning, you know? Yeah, maybe sure. Maybe not a SmackDown Live general manager, though. I don't know. That's That's up in the air. But we don't even know what's happening with the Shane McMahon thing. And we, they couldn't get the Godwins? <laughs> yeah, God knows what they're up to. And I hope that Midian wouldn't come out naked. <laughs> um, we're recording this, by the way, everybody, uh, quarter after four in the afternoon. So SmackDown hasn't happened yet. So we don't know what's going on with the Shane McMahon situation. That's why it's not going to be on the hot tags right now. I think it's bullshit. I think that it's a work. And that's my takeaway. So real quick, do you think it's a work or do you think it's a shoot? Can you work? Like, that's a pretty specific thing to say. The that fact that it was posted on WWE.com and that they did this whole injury angle makes me suspicious. It might just be poor timing, but who knows? It might be. And it might be one of those things where he – they did that segment and then he was like, you know what? I actually kind of feel a little fucked up. And then they got it checked out and then they were like, hey, you have diverticulitis. It might be, but – uh, until they address something outside of WWE's confinement, I don't believe it. Because I'm assuming hey. that later tonight they're going to do something where it's going to be like Shane McMahon is out and we don't know if he uh, – what's going on with him. And Daniel Bryan might be out too and like Kevin Owens or whatever. They, you know, we'll, we'll see tonight. I mean we got like four they, hours. They can't possibly do that. You have a week left. What are you going to do? Announce five main events the Monday and Tuesday before Mania? No, we'd only need um, John Cena Undertaker, which only needs one segment where Undertaker pops up and says, you're on. And we need um, SmackDown Tag Team titles, which they could pretty much announce tonight. Everybody knows it's it's a triple threat, you know. But we definitely need, we still need the Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, or Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens match, whatever they're going to do there. Yeah. And I guess they decided against the uh, the ladder clusterfuck this year. For? Or do you think the SmackDown Tag Team? If it's going to be, I mean, if there's no. going to be a ladder match, it has to be a SmackDown tag because that's the only one that hasn't had like an announcement yet. Hey, look at that! I don't know if you could hear, but uh, Scott Steiner yeah. or Cesaro might be in the area. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure uh, Scott Steiner's coming down your block right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was curious what happens with SmackDown, but we'll see. Um, Have you seen this redone women's battle royal trophy? They redid it. I didn't hear anything about that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm looking at the image. I'm going to send it to you on the Skype call here. This is a funny looking trophy. I don't know. It's got me chuckling a little bit. Now I'm curious as all hell because I was imagining that they weren't even going to have a trophy at this point. I just assumed that they would give, you know, just be like, hey, congrats. And a little graphic would pop up or something like that. But let's see what we got now. Uh, Huh. That, uh... (laughs) Wow. Okay. Somebody did not think that through? Oh my god, they couldn't pot... No, that has to be fake. Okay, but it's from the official WrestleMania Twitter. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Really? 
Oh my <laughs> god. All yeah, right, for anybody that does not know what this image looks like because they have not looked at it yet, fallopian tubes. <laughs> Jesus, they ah. Uh. <laughs> wow. All right, you know, um, let's uh, let's pivot over to another hot tag here because why not? There is a rumor going around now that there's going to be a women's tag team title. Coming. Oh, wow. <laughs> so if we get the first tag team champions are nicknamed the fallopian tubes, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Well, uh, all right. I think the women's tag titles would have been well served in the 2010 Everybody's Got a BFF era of like Kelly Kelly and Eve, the Divas of Doom, um, the Bellas Wins, of course. You know, something like that. If they do a women's tag team division, obviously Sasha and Bailey are the first champs, right? Oh, uh, definitely unless, not. <laughs> unless, um... Well, they, they're splitting up, so... Well, that's what I'm saying. They can do, like, a Benoit angle. We hate each other, but we bring up the best in each other. Like, yeah. Or, they just bring back the Bella Twins full-time for that. Well, here's... I, I'm hoping that this is bullshit. For many, many reasons. Number one, I'm hoping that the cruiserweight tag title thing is bullshit too. I don't need more titles in WWE you at this point. Four tag team championships, five if you count NXT. And we don't need that. God forbid if they do a Raw Women's Tag Team Champion and a SmackDown Women's Tag Team Champion. My God, they don't need that. But even if you just have it as one, then that means that you're going to need to have cross branded people between these because there's not enough you can't have one tag team title for both brands without having a, a cross-branded thing which at that point that means you no longer have the brand split because you're having the co-branded pay-per-views and a championship that goes between the two things for the entirety of the women's division that's how they, they ended the first brand split right they unified the shows and then it was like well, here's the unified tag team titles, and the tag team champions can go between both brands. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, there's a world champion and a WWE champion and an intercontinental in the United States and one tag team title, and everybody's popping up because it's a Raw super show, and on SmackDown, we're having special guest Raw stars, and then they just stop talking about Raw stars coming over, and it just becomes WWE stars coming over. And then they're not coming over anymore. Then they're just over. And, you know, I wouldn't be shocked at all if that's the case. But I hope that that's not true because we don't have enough women. Even if we bring up every single woman from the NXT roster, there's not enough women to have two tag titles. And, and I, listen, it's not necessary. It's it isn't. Period. It's not necessary. But, like, what teams do we get? We get Absolution. The Riot Squad. We get the Riot Squad, which I would hope at some point one of them would leave the Riot Squad because we don't need the three. We don't even need the two of them together. But, like, I, I really hope that that stable just splits up. Uh, we would get Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, probably. Um, we maybe Bailey and Sasha Banks. I'm assuming Asuka doesn't team up with anybody. I'm assuming Nia Jax doesn't team up with anybody. Unless they put them together. I'm assuming Alicia Fox does team up with somebody when she comes back. Uh, Dana Brooke, she, they don't know what the hell they want to do with her, so she, I'm 100% sure she's not being factored in whatsoever. Uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte, maybe. Becky Lynch and Naomi, maybe. Uh, do, you, do you bring back Cameron just to do the Funkadackles? I'm uh, assuming that we get Lana with somebody, maybe Lana and Tamina pick up where they left off when Tamina comes back. Maybe Carmella teams up with Liv Morgan if they split up, uh, whatever. Natty probably gets a tag team member, but then you have every single woman teaming with somebody, and then that makes it to where you can't do a woman's title that means something. Yeah, you can't do two women's titles that mean all that much, and the the iconic duo come up, of course. And yeah, I mean that'll be a division for them, and you know nobody else. So this is what I was bringing up before when you mentioned the idea of Nikki Bella doing the Raw or the SmackDown general manager thing. I think that this means that for sure we need the Bella Twins. Yeah. So Bella Twins and Iconic Duo would be the only 
two teams that we need. I mean, they have done this before in the 80s, and they had, to the best of my knowledge, the only women's tag team match I can think of was the Glamour Girls and the uh, Jumping Bomb Angels. Angels, Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we do that. That's all we need is the one tag team feud, and it goes away after six months. I say the only way that they can do this, and it's not going to happen, is if they say we don't have a Raw and a women's champion anymore. We just have a WWE women's champion, and we put all the women on one show, and we put that show as like uh, like we switch 205 Live around or something. Girl, girl power. That's the only way I can see anything happening like this, because starring Stephanie McMahon, you know, and it'll be some, uh, like I don't know, I don't have a clue what they would call it, but like that's not going to happen. So it's either going to be that we do have women's tag titles, and it's going to be this cross-branded mess where I know it'll be a Facebook Live exclusive, Tony. It'll be called. I would not be this the uh, too shocked if, he, if that mixed match challenge thing because the original idea for the mixed match challenge, according to the rumors, was an all women's show. So, well, so what if they do it? What if they going to take the women and put them on Facebook and say this is the only place you can see the women of WWE? No, not the only place, but I think that that would not be shocking if that was the only place that the women's tag titles were defended. That I'm not too opposed. I am, because I, I, I do not want to watch another half an hour of TV every week. You just week. don't want to cover any more wrestling. <laughs> I, mean, I don't okay. I don't want to do that, and I don't have any interest in a women's tag title. There's there's nothing positive that comes out of this in my mind. It worked out so well for TNA. Yeah. I think it's a mistake, and I hope that the rumors are bullshit, but at the same time, uh, we did hear about those cruiserweight tag titles, and they're teaming more and more people up on 205 Live. And that I think is going to happen. I'm not. I'm. I'm leaning more towards if only one of them happens, the cruiserweight tag will. But at the same time, we do have Mickey and Alexa. We do have the Bell Twins. We do have the iconic duo possibly coming up. We do have Absolution, and we do have the uh, Riot Squad. So I would not be too shocked if we get that women's tag title. And they have been adamant about we need to do everything historic for the women's division that we possibly can every month possible. So there's somebody out there, whether it's Stephanie or somebody uh, in their ear, where they said, well, then shouldn't the women have a tag title? And then they went, okay, well, we can't not have it now, like that kind of a thing. Which then okay. starts to make you go, well, then don't we need a women's mid-card title? And then you go, well, how the fuck do you have all these titles, you know? You don't need that, though. The only way that that would work, too, is if you had one women's show, no branded, and you replaced either the Raw or the SmackDown Women's Championship with whatever the mid-card would be. And it was one show. It was just the Women's Championship, and then the, the mid-card, and then the tag. And you would still need more women. Like, it's just, it's not going to work. And well, but they have a, a long list from the Mae Young Classic, don't they? No, not most of them aren't in the slightest bit signed. Oh. And if you take everybody up from NXT, you have nobody in NXT anymore. You know. So well, I don't want to. I'm not going to draw on about this, but since you mentioned the historic of the women, I have this vivid image in my head of we have to do the first female main event of WrestleMania at WrestleMania 35, the Statue of Liberty, women's liberation. I have this whole spiel in my head about like women's liberation and wrestling at 35 and statue of liberty oh it's happening it's oscar versus ronda rousey i'm assuming charlotte Flair versus. <laughs> i would rather have charlotte versus actually i'd rather have charlotte versus oscar because ronda rousey has been sucking ass <laughs> but uh we'll, we'll get there <laughs> yeah that, we're gonna talk about that next week when we talk about our mania predictions but um, let's backtrack a little bit to another thing here for the hot tags. Uh, this is real quick because I don't know anything. Garza Jr. and Ultimo Ninja are rumored to be signing with WWE. I have, All right, I know Garza Jr. I have no idea I've who either of them are. Today. Ultimo Ninja, I'm going to Google right now because I've never even heard that name. I don't think I've heard either of those names. Ultimo Ninja sounds like a select character in like a Street Fighter type game. And uh, Garza Jr. just sounds like a, you know, generic kind of name. Like, I've never heard well, these two. do you know Hector Garza? Oh, it's his son? 
Yeah, and apparently, uh, I'm looking at Ultimo Ninja's Twitter. It says, member of the Garza dynasty, so maybe they're all related. I don't know. Oh, like they're like a tag team or something? That didn't work out so well when they brought in Primo and Epico with Carlito. <laughs> which, is, which is funny, because I just looked at a poster, and it looks like the poster's headlined by Primo or Epico. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. WWE bringing in foreign stars, with the exception of Rey Mysterio and uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, doesn't usually work. Well, I mean, like Andrade, San Amos, uh, Epper de Del Rio, right. I have to admit, worked to, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, though, I think Del Rio worked more because they stripped Del Rio of anything Dos Caras Jr., and they made him Alberto Del Rio. It, it actually reinvigorated his whole persona in wrestling in general same thing with andrade almas if they do that for these guys you know why not yeah i don't know anything about them so if anybody does know leave them in the comments below tell us what you think about them uh i just accidentally clicked on this uh women's championship trophy thing again and i'm like oh my god it's so fucking bad uh (laughs) i can't believe they're doing that that's all i can see in my head right now is the streamers are red (laughs) <laughs> like, uh, oh my god <laughs> anyway um the latest wwe special on the network was a photo shoot with kofi kingston and i liked it i thought it was pretty good i, li- I like it i like kofi kofi is incredible he's been there for a long time now he's been there for 10 years and he's one of those guys who will probably never get his just do now that he's forever entangled in the new day but kofi was a huge part of the youth movement 10 years ago so you know nice to relive those moments and i don't really know what to say i like kofi he's- yeah kofi's a guy that has a lot more personality than they give him credit for yeah so if you watch him on up, up down down or you see him in like these kind of by themselves little uh, video packages or little like uh, behind the scenes interviews or anything like that. Like um, Kofi tends to be a lot more personable, and they never really give him any mic time beforehand. Now they do with the new day, but now he's not a single star. So I like it. I like the you know looking back on some of the old things, like him fucking up Randy Orton's car, and that's the moment I always go back to that whole Randy Orton thing because that felt like wow, we're witnessing a star. He did the boom drop from. The Raptors at MSG, and it was, you know, what a moment. He boomed off Randy Orton at MSG through a table. Yeah, then they didn't and follow was, it up. Yeah, because, you know, no one cares, pal. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a shame that that didn't happen, but at least he's got the new day. And this, more than anything, made me go, wow, Kofi Kingston's been around for 10 years. For a long time, yeah. That's crazy. Because when he first won the IC title from Jericho... It was like, who is this new guy? You know, he's fresh off of the ECW brand, which there's a lot of fans currently who probably don't even realize that that was a thing, you know? Yeah, that's weird. Memories. (laughs) And uh, this is our last topic to talk about. Remember how for, I don't know how many years at this point, We've been doing Smack Talk, and eventually WWE decided to do Talking Smack. We made a bunch of jokes. You know, I don't own the name Smack Talk. It's a maybe, maybe you should. It's a phrase that is so public domain that it's like, you know, if somebody 10 years before I started doing this said like, hey, you know, I own a copyright to that as a podcast thing, I would be forced to change the name. You know, it's just one of those things. It's the case. And then it would just become smart out moment, something else or whatever, or just smart out moment podcast or something like that. But so whenever I've come across people on the internet that have been like, hey, I'm going to do a wrestling podcast and it's called Smack Talk. I've been like, oh, I got no reason to complain to them. Like, I don't own that. If they somebody tried to actually take my logo and use it one time and I complained about that. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things. Talking Smack, we joked. We said, oh, they're trying to steal away from Smack Talk, whatever. Well, for a couple of years, we've been making this joke about the idea of that we talk about food so much that we should do snack talk. 
WWE just were applied uh, applied for a trademark of talking snack. <laughs> Where you know, <laughs> they're going to do a cooking and fitness show. It says here, there's a description for it in the uh, trademark. It says, entertainment services, namely an ongoing audio and visual program in the field of cooking. Entertainment in the nature of ongoing audio and visual programs in the fields of recipes, ingredients, and cooking information. Providing a website featuring blogs and non-downloadable publications in the nature of articles in the fields of cooking, recipes, ingredients, exercise, fitness, and health. Exercise, fitness, blah, 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 blah. Essentially just like boiling down to that they are applying a trademark for anything that they could do website or online media related as far as – they keep repeating the phrases. Cooking, recipes, ingredients, exercise, fitness, and health. Talking snack. My god, I wish The Rock was around for that. <laughs> well, the first episode would have to be about some kind of pie. Ah. I mean, I mean, first of all, Tony, you need to trademark Smack Talk before they try to bring back Talking Smack as a weekly show, and they try to call it Smack Talk, and then you're screwed. <laughs> um, I I don't know, man. I I think it's one of those things, kind of like Renee Young's Unfiltered, that they're gonna throw all this money and all this trademarks into, and then they're gonna do it once or twice and leave it. Yeah. And I'm assuming that this is something that they're going to do just like maybe it's going to be like a, a part of the YouTube side of things. Maybe they'll do like a, a side blog kind of. But yeah, it's, it's either a WWE Network special or it's a an ongoing YouTube series. And I would I would assume more so ongoing YouTube where they would just have like diet and fitness tips and stuff and you know this is a, a recipe that you can do sort of along the lines of um oh god what was the name that she was calling it uh taste of tenille i think yeah i was thinking wow it'd be really great to have her right now wouldn't it well that, that plus i think the bell twins have some kind of fucking cooking thing or something but they have like everything and i don't pay attention to that goddamn channel so um, yeah it could Shane be like currently is doing celtic warrior workouts he is? I'm realizing that that's getting a lot more traction. Yeah, he's like working out with like Alexa Bliss, and I think he even did one with Nia Jax. I see one here with Kalisto. Huh. Didn't even know about that. There's too many goddamn things to check out, so it's hard to, yeah, you know. Yeah, everybody, everybody is their own brand now. And that makes content really difficult to process because there's too much content to process. Yeah, and you have to just pick. That's why certain people just go, you know what? I don't think I'm going to watch anything of 205 Live. Because they're like, well, I watch three hours of Raw, and I watch two hours of SmackDown, and I watch a pay-per-view, and then, you know, I watch an hour of NXT, and then it's like, well, fuck the uh, Mixed Match Challenge, you know? But Talking Snack is not something that I would ever watch. I don't need to watch uh, some kind of cooking show from WWE people where they go, all right, today we're going to try Ember Moon's... Uh, shortbread cookies or this is going to be the recipe that uh drake maverick likes uh I don't know, shepherd's pie or you know like I, I don't i don't care like you know but i did think that it was funny talking snack is a fucking thing coming up soon which means all the more reason why i need to do snack talk at some point yes Maybe that's what we'll do when they do the first episode. We'll do the first episode of Snack Talk. Maybe. And I'll have, like, instead of the little audio uh, waves coming out of the Smack Talk logo, I'll have, like, I don't know, bananas or something. Like that. <laughs> I love bananas. You know, something like that. I'll figure something out. If you have any suggestions of a Snack Talk logo, <laughs> drop it in the comments below. Um, we'll do a crossover with uh, Payton's Punch and Pie. Just the pie part, though. <laughs> Well, we do we do the punches enough already. Yeah, unless it's fruit punch, we can. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> so those are the hot tags for this week, everybody. Um, hopefully, the audio is not all too weird for this edition. But if it is, too bad. It's going to be like that tomorrow too. And um, I'll try to tweak something if you leave any comments below. In the meantime, I probably won't get around to it. But you know, because it's only about an, a day for that kind of a thing, and I've got tons and tons of TV coverage to do tonight. Of 
SmackDown and Mixed Match Challenge and uh, 205 Live and then reporting on all that crap on multiple different websites and stuff. So I'm going to be uh, fist deep in WWE the rest of the night. And that sounded so much worse now that I have that women's <laughs> battle royal thing up on my screen. <laughs> That's exactly where my head has been since I've seen that trophy. Who thought that was a good idea? Oh my god. Oh. I, I want to make that the thumbnail so bad. Just that. <laughs> uh, I'll probably put Hogan on there. But um, yeah, so let us know what you think about all these topics in the comments below, everybody, as normal. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Smart Out Moment. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Hit that bell for the notifications too, because when we do post the main event for this week, you'll be aware of when that gets posted. And that main event is going to be Wrestling with the Past. It's going to be our retrospective of the 2018 class of the Hall of Fame, where we talk about all the information that we have going into this, which right now we actually are missing some information. So hopefully in the next 24 hours, we get the inductees that are not announced yet, like the Legacy Award, and we get, you know, who's going to be inducting certain people and stuff. And if not, then we'll just speculate, but it'll be our memories of the certain people, our thoughts about the class in general, and all that other kind of stuff. So be aware Maybe of that. Maybe some singing. Maybe some singing. Maybe. Who knows? Depends on if we can get a certain guest. And um, yeah, anything else you want to be aware of, obviously, of course, markoutmoment.com. And if you want to follow Robert on all the stuff that he's got going on, toss out there any plugs you want to toss out. I mean, I'm at Dude Felice on Twitter and Instagram. I have there's time killer apparel follow that everywhere at time killer apparel and then there's pandemonium mania which you can follow that at pandemonium mania which is one word so P uh, pandemonium ania because it, it's, it's a difficult word to spell <laughs> it's pandemonium but, and then ania yeah pandemonium ania <laughs> practically uh yeah but that's it for us yeah, and from my side of things, the only other thing I need to mention to you guys, are, of course, is fanboysanonymous.com. And I'm hoping that on uh, Thursday night I get to see Ready Player One and uh, post up a review about that. Maybe you on Thursday night, Friday, something like that. If not, maybe Sunday. You know, It'll be coming up eventually. Um, I'll see that at some point. And I will see you when I see you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the episode number 303 of The Hot Tags. We will see you next time. This has been another Smart Out Moment. And we are being counted out.